it pains me to say that My Hero Academia Season 7 is not very good. And that's coming from someone who never stopped watching this show. By season 4 and 5, so many people stopped watching, but I continued because I genuinely love My Hero Academia. I thought the quality had stepped down a tad, but I figured it was just a temporary decrease in quality. I figured we'd get back to the greatness found in the first three seasons. And I have never been so wrong, because My Hero Academia Season 7 is not very good. It does have some stuff that I enjoyed, but generally, I was pretty disappointed. I'm gonna talk about the beginning of the season later in the video, but I just want to get started with the real meat of this season, which is the war between the heroes and villains. And while I thought pretty much every aspect of the season was disappointing, I think it actually started off fairly good. Dobby's backstory was surprisingly good. When he had his mask off moment in the last season, I was just kind of like, that's it. But this gave much needed context and clarity that made the whole thing a lot more poignant. I also really like the new technique Todoroki uses to defeat Dobby. It makes total sense for his character. Using his left and right side at the same time, it's actually perfect. Although I will say that the fight itself is really anticlimactic. It's not even really a fight as much as it's just Todoroki doing his new attack and winning. This is supposed to be the final showdown with someone who has been one of the main villains for like like six seasons and the fight is over before it even starts. Now originally this was really lackluster and disappointing to me, however Dobby ends up just coming back. And I think the part where they finally defeat him was good enough, the whole family coming together was a nice touch. The fight will all for one and some of the heroes was also pretty entertaining. Endeavor and Hawks get a lot of good moments here and some of the side characters also get some time to shine. And all for one is all for one. You know, this is probably the only time in the season all for one is actually kind of entertaining. He actually feels really intimidating here, and I love the way he just keeps taunting Endeavor. But in the rest of the season, all for one really sucks. I just hate the way everything conveniently goes his way no matter what. Just for him to be like, haha, all of this was a part of my master plan. Every time it looks like he might be at a disadvantage, he just chalks it up to the fact that, oh, this is just another root in my plan that I had totally accounted for. It just feels more and more cheap every time he does it. And another thing that feels cheap is the way he has so many goddamn quirks. And I know this is kind of like his thing and everything, but again, it just feels too convenient how he's always got the quirk he needs in every situation. But I think what really made me feel this way in particular was his rewind quirk. And the verb basically kills him just for all for one to reveal the fact that he has a quirk that can rewind time and heal all of his injuries. Like, I don't know man, I feel like this was kind of an important thing to mention earlier so that we would have known that he had this instead of him just like pulling it out of his ass. And I gotta say that I'm really not a fan of the way him and Shigaraki kind of just turn into the same person. I think Shigaraki has been a really good character in My Hero Academia, but this decision basically removes all agency and personality from him. And it's also just confusing as fuck what's really going on with this fusion between them because it's never explained properly. It's so unclear whether it's Shigaraki or All for One in control, so whenever they do an action, I don't know whether it's All for One or Shigaraki who's actually doing it. It's like I'm watching this completely new third character. Now, despite this, I do think there is some pretty good stuff in the fight with Shigaraki and Bakugo and the rest of the heroes. Bakugo is, I think, the one thing in this whole story that has been handled with perfection, and that is no different in this fight. He is just so damn charismatic and we get to see how much he has developed by seeing him utilize teamwork and even sacrificing himself. And the scene with him and All Might is just perfect, admitting how he just wanted to be like All Might and always admired him, but also regrets how they interacted during UA. And I just love the way everyone works together to save Bakugo. Seeing characters act like true heroes is so satisfying at this point in the story. Like the ninja dude who gives his life to save Bakugo. I think it would have been more interesting if the character to save him would have been someone we knew a bit better, like best genus, especially because he actually knows Bakugo, but oh well. Everyone gives 110% to save Bakugo, because that's what heroes are supposed to do. Lamillion showing his ass to Shigaraki was very unexpected, but I think it works really well. Being a hero is not about looking cool, it's about doing whatever is in your power to save others, and at this point in time, that was the only thing he could have done to save 
Bakugo. A desperate attempt to save someone even though he didn't know it would work. I think this also would have been more impactful if someone like Eraserhead had done it because it would have been even more unexpected from Aizawa. Plus it's already somewhat within Lamillion's character to do something like this in the first place, but still, this was very good. And the action during this fight is generally pretty solid as well. I wasn't really a fan of the way Shigaraki got the power to like destroy whole countries in the last season as I thought it was a bit over the top, but luckily for me, they nullify his power completely this season by using Monoma and the water dude, which I thought was actually pretty clever. I don't think I'm really a fan of the way Shigaraki turns into this giant CGI hand monster or whatever, even though in concept it sounds like a cool visual considering Shigaraki's character, although this isn't really Shigaraki anymore, so uh, unfortunately I will not be praising this season again for a very long time, as the second half of this season really disappoints. Deku finally shows up to take on Shigaraki, but this little clash between them is so lackluster, mainly because of Deku and his powers. He just has too goddamn many of them man. I was fine with the black whip he got before because we actually got like a whole training arc where he learned how to use it and the audience got to see its capabilities, but now all of a sudden he has like 7 different quirks he can use that all have their own ups and downsides. When he fought Shigaraki, I was just kinda like, oh, okay. I guess he can do that. Just like with All for One, it doesn't feel smart or clever, Deku just uses whatever BS ability he has. If we look back at Deku's fights in the earlier seasons, to me, they work so well because I know exactly what Deku can do and what he can't do. He can't unleash 100% of his power without injuring himself, so he uses it in his fingers instead to maximize the amount of attacks he has. This is a clever solution for him to come up with to avoid injuring himself. He can still use the 100% smash if if he really needs to as a last resort or he can use it in his legs to escape. I knew the ins and outs of his powers so whenever he used it I'd be like oh yeah that makes sense that's clever. Now he has some bum ass purple smoke he can fly he has the fucking spider sense like it's just way too much. It's also worth mentioning that the pacing of this season comes to a screeching halt around halfway in. After spending like 10 episodes waiting for Deku and Shigaraki to fight each other we instead focus on literally everything else. Like just when we had gotten to the part we were waiting for the story thinks of every single detail and character it can to show us instead of the fight. Episode 152 is the episode right after their fight starts and it is the worst episode in the entire show. We get this extremely boring boneless episode about heteromorphs attacking the hospital while everyone's favorite characters Koda and Shoji defend it. I just hate this episode with a burning passion because it has everything that I hate about the newer My Hero seasons. Bland and under the developed side characters, rushed writing, ideas presented in the most uninteresting ways ever. For some reason they thought this would be a good time to show how heteromorphs get discriminated towards because their quirk changes their appearance drastically, and because of that many of them become villains. Now that's not a terrible idea for a story, but why the fuck are you starting to tell that story at the end of the story? We have basically never seen heteromorphs being discriminated towards in the first place. All the most prominent heteromorph characters we have are all living good lives, like we have the principal of the biggest hero school ever, several teachers, a police officer, Koda and Shoji themselves who we have never seen get discriminated against. The closest thing I can think of was this random fox lady who got introduced in literally the last arc. There were a million opportunities to establish this discrimination at earlier parts of the story, plus it can't even deliver its message in an interesting way. Everything is so heavy handed and has no depth. It's literally just Shoji shouting, don't resort to anger, have empathy instead, for like half the episode. You might as well have just put a box of text on the screen that said that instead of just wasting our time like this. Why would anyone think it's a good idea to cram discrimination and complex societal issues into a single episode without any build up to it or any fleshed out characters to participate in it? 
like this is just so fucking frustrating because it's like seeing someone hand in a terrible assignment a month after the deadline and the assignment is about rocket science. It's like seeing someone trying to solve racism in a day. And also this battle just doesn't make any sense in the first place. Like how did the villains manage to gather all these heteromorphs and organize this attack on the hospital when this whole war was started because of a surprise attack from the heroes? This made me realize yeah, this shit never made any sense in the first place. Like earlier I pointed out how I liked how the war started with all the heroes and villains face to face at the same time and place. But this was supposed to be a surprise attack. All for one did not know the heroes were going to attack. So why the hell did he not only have the whole villain army on standby, but he had an organized plan to attack the hospital? Like there is no way he could have known. So did this just coincidentally happen at the same time on the same day? If so, that is is so dumb. Genuinely, this was such a big gaping plot hole, I had to search it up and try to find an answer. But I couldn't find anyone asking this question, so I had to resort to ChatGBT. All for one is always several steps ahead. Oh, shut the fuck up. This episode truly fucking sucks. I hate it so much. It's so awful. It's so bad that I didn't even think Coda was that annoying in this episode. Coda has always been my least favorite My Hero Academic character. I just hate him so much. That worthless piece of garbage. But this episode was so bad that I didn't even notice him. All right, that's enough of that episode because it genuinely makes me embarrassed to say I like this show. And fortunately, the next few episodes are not very good either. Maybe Mainly because every time something interesting starts happening, it cuts away to something completely unrelated. I thought Gentle Criminal coming back was pretty dope. It was like a nice full circle moment. But then La Brava is also back and now we have to watch some dumbass side plot about her hacking into the mainframe to save the floating island and then her and someone else has a hack off even though it didn't matter in the first place because the island just ends up falling so the whole thing was pointless. We have to watch this fucking fish dude talk to the president of the United States. I have never seen a show this confident in its side characters that it hasn't spent any time developing. I don't give a fuck about about the business course wanting to film the battle. Like, who even are you? I don't care about this random news reporter either. Like, can we please just get back to the story? <laughs> There are like seven episodes that go by where so much uninteresting stuff happens. Meanwhile, Deku and Shigaraki are just standing still doing nothing. Like legit, they have just been staring at each other for seven episodes straight, just waiting for the story to focus on them again. And this issue is particularly bad because the goal of those other episodes is to stall All For One from getting to Shigaraki so that Deku can beat Shigaraki first. But it turns out All For One could have just taken all the time in the world because they aren't even fighting, they're just staring at each other, doing nothing. And I must say that this season is just next level ugly. It's the worst animated season out of all of them, but the worst part is the colors and the backgrounds. Like damn, I know this show has been ugly for a while now, but I can't remember it being this bad. This is supposed to be a huge war between heroes and villains, and these are the visuals I'm given? Like what the fuck am I even looking at? The resolution of Toga's character was also pretty whack. I've never really liked Toga, she's probably the Messi's character in the entire story and it would require like a whole nother video to break down why I don't like her. So instead let's talk about the only thing that's left. As much as I think My Hero Academia's quality has been dropping for a while, every season has always had at least one moment that I think has been amazing and reminded me of why I like this show. And because we were at the end of the season, I figured it wouldn't have a moment like that this time. But all Might went ahead and proved me wrong because holy shit this was insane. All Might has like sort of been fading into the background for a while and I had been kind of getting worried that he wasn't going to have anything to do in the story ever again. But as soon as I heard this line... <laughs> I knew I was wrong. All Might may not have a quirk anymore, but as Deku taught him long ago, that doesn't mean you can't be a hero. This was such a satisfying full circle moment, and I love the way All Might knows All For One is going to have to stop to kill All Might. All For One is a villain, it is in his nature, and All Might knows that. We also have this insane animated sequence of Todoroki and Ida that is just fucking awesome. I mean bro, they turn into a fucking jet, like this was just so cool. The fight with All Might also looks really good, and I love the way All 
All Might doesn't stop smiling. Even when he knows he's about to die, he has no fear, which is one of the greatest strengths of a villain. I cannot express enough how much I love this fight and this moment for All Might. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the end of it as the season just ends, but I'm excited to see where it goes. So yeah, despite the fact that this season had some stuff I really liked, it also had a lot of stuff that I really didn't like. And it also had a lot of aspects that were pretty mid. So because I apparently do number scores now, I'm giving My Hero Academia Season 7 a 7 out of 10, which is an incredibly generous 7. And no, I didn't give it a 7 just because it's Season 7. And again, I didn't really talk about what I thought about the beginning of the season regarding Aoyama and Stars and Stripes, so you have to check out this video to hear what I thought about that.